Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 239 to 240 for the 20th and 21st of October for the Ukraine war or the Russian special military operation or the Russian invasion of uh, democratic, free and uh, innocent Ukraine and uh, so the uh, yesterday I did not do a summary because uh, I was busy uh, and then uh, also because uh, there wasn't really a lot of things happened and uh, but then today uh, after a good rest from yesterday i'm talking about the ukraine ukrainian forces uh they relaunched their offensive uh in the southern front and uh and the uh, kupians liman region so uh let's start off with weird statements so the russian ministry of defense are uh, in their one, one in one of their report uh or in their telegram channel uh they kind of uh do a very very weird flex if you ask me so they say that um each mobilized soldier consumes or basically used at least 600 life ammunition uh in a single training alone and then uh they say that uh in in the training each training you know will use 600 life bullets and five grenades and uh and this is part of the training before they actually be sent to the front so you know this is like a very very weird kind of flex because the ukrainian soldiers you know the conscripts are known to be firing firing less than 25 bullets and uh they themselves in a single training use 600 so you know um yeah it's kind of a funny thing to talk about and uh so the ukrainian defense ministry finally shot down another russian plane uh this time around it's a sukhoi 25 of course uh no idea where where it is uh, because they don't really share about the location of the shoot down and uh, let's go down to the southern front so no i i guess you must be very happy because not a lot of other nonsense uh, to talk about um so at the southern front uh the ukrainians are reportedly shelling the antonovsky antonovsky bridge and uh, this comes after the russians say they were they are evacuating civilians from uh, the Kherson region and uh somehow they still decide to strike the bridge so uh so you know predictably uh, the russians are saying that civilians are getting killed uh including two journalists uh, from a local tv station and uh so believe up to, if you want to believe or not up to you uh the ukrainian defense ministry uh on the reported that on the 20th there is a reinforcement up to 2000 troops uh arriving in the Kherson region so not exactly a Kherson city but in the region so in the front so somehow they they know about it uh so the nova kahovka as per i have pre previously reported uh is no longer usable the current only bridge left uh, is the antonovsky bridge if i'm not wrong there is also a pontoon crossing here uh not sure if the pontoon crossing is still uh usable or is it still there or not and uh over at the mikolai front at the mikolai front uh the ukrainian forces uh launched an offensive over at the private this comes along with the uh, it, this come at the same time as the rest of the Kherson front uh, over here as you can see it's actually part of the same offensive so attack private and then uh and then they also attack in five other different directions there is a mid-29 sh getting shot down uh, over Perimoha. Uh, this according to the russian defense ministry uh as i as usual uh it's a little bit of a distance 20 kilometers from the front and over now to the Kherson front. At the Kherson front, uh, on the 20th, there is reinforcement reported at Novo Voskresenske. And um, it's not a lot. It's only 70 soldiers. And then there wasn't any f offensive on the 20th. But on the 21st, the Ukrainians launched, after you know having a good rest, uh, they know that you know me doing all this report is very tiring. So they, they give me a break. So now... Uh, they say okay stop resting and then they launch an offensive at Brukinsky, uh Bezvone, Piaktikaki, Sukhanove, sorry click the wrong button, Sukhanove and uh, Sablukivka. So you know, interesting is that they actually attack Sablukivka. Uh, they haven't been known to, uh, according to my reporting, I haven't seen them attacking this location. And uh, this also put into question whether the Russians actually hold a position here in the southern part of Tuchani. So because they're attacking here. But of course they can also bypass any defenders around here. So they're attacking 
but they are not attacking at the city it is only in the direction so all these are all in the direction that means they are moving towards all these settlements uh in the in their offensive and uh according to the this this is the russian De defense ministry report they said that uh the attacks were repulsed and the uh, ukrainians are driven back to their original positions uh they claim uh, quite a number of losses for the ukrainian side and uh yeah but i don't really care about the losses uh because these numbers cannot be trusted and uh that's all from the Kherson front so uh, moving on to the Zaporizhia region. At the Zaporizhia region, uh, there is a concentration of forces reported at Zaporizhia, and uh, along along with this, along with this one, there's also another concentration of forces over at Novo Giorgivka or Novo Giorgivka, Novo Giorgivka. Oh my God, the Rus the Ukrainian uh, perversion of the words is so difficult to read. So anyway, um. Uh, there is fighting reporter at Ohilsky. Uh, so there is some um, uh, recon by combat in this region. Uh, not Nothing very significant. And over at the very end of the Zaporizhia line at the Velika Novosilka region, uh, the Ukrainians launched a counter-offensive uh, at Vremivka on both days. So on the 20th and on the 21st. They tried twice to try to you know, attack uh, the Russian forces over at the high grounds around here at Vremivka region uh, so have not no you ill results given how the Ministry of Defense of Russia have reported it over at the Donetsk front so in case you guys are lost this is Donetsk in the southeastern part of the war zone and um, the Ukrainians uh, launched their own offensive over at Solotke uh, over here uh, the Russians call this location um, Balka Solanaya, Solinaya, so it, 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 it's kind of weird. And uh, the U Russians continue to push over at the Marinka region, uh, where they attack on both days. Uh, sorry, on the 20th, they attack Marinka. They, they didn't, there's no report of them attacking on the 21st. Today, they are still attacking. And then there's Pojeda is exactly the same thing. Uh, so the, so these are the the second day one is by war gonzo and the way how they describe it uh it might be a case where war gonzo is actually reporting based on what the ukrainian defense ministry reported so um so you can take a pinch of salt because war gonzo is not exactly the most accurate sources unless they have the journalists on the ground so if not you know sometimes this kind of information they probably took it from the ukrainian defense ministry's report uh, because typically other than uh, War Gonzo repeating all these things uh, and the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, I actually don't really even see other pro-Russian sources talking about the fight in Marinka or at Bojeda. Uh, even for Raiba, they very seldom talk about this this uh, front line here. So that's why I have my suspicion that War Gonzo actually is just parroting what the Ukrainian Defense Ministry say. And uh, this is also you know, very... Uh, common you know the pro-ukrainian uh, sources reports analysts youtubers they are also taking from the pro-russian sources so don't be surprised you know everybody's just taking more or less from the same sources so you know uh, which is why i always you know question people what's your source where where do you think you get it from and uh, where do you think the pro-ukrainian side you know the youtubers or the analysts you know where do you think where do you think they get the information from they're also getting the same information from where i'm getting it from so you know it's just a matter of interpretation of the information so um over at the Pervomaiske or Piski region the russian forces uh is reportedly uh resuming their fight at Pervomaiske on the 21st and uh, there is this fighting reported at opayne by the ukrainian defense ministry on the 20th um so and then uh, there is also uh this uh this this the one of that you know the one that i'm more curious about where the uh, Russian forces is attacking uh, Novo Kalinovic because I think this is one of the more you know uh, out of the norm uh, front where it's developing into a bird you can see you know this is the the big the small little big you know this is a small bird or maybe this is a crow you no know? so you know it's trying to eat this uh this red grape here and uh, maybe they are heading for this blueberry over here so you no know, yeah so no but the 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 ukrainian defense seems to hold over here 
and uh, previously we also reported that it was fighting at Karamik so you know this entire region here is under attack by the Russian forces and uh, that's all from the Donetsk front over at the Bakhmut front at the Bakhmut front the Russian forces continue to make their push over at Ozaryanivka uh, and uh, there is also fighting reported at Oreddivka according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry this, this is outdated information I think yeah it's outdated information and uh, no more fighting reported at Klishivka the there is bombardment though i read uh the ukrainian defense ministry reported there is bombardment at klishivka um so the situation here at Oret, uh ivandrat and uh opine is a bit more confusing according to the russian pro-russian sources there is fighting reported at opine uh how, then there according to raiba there is a ukrainian counter-offensive against uh ivandrat from opine region as well as as from uh I think it's Klishivka, right? Yeah, from Klishivka. And then, uh, however, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry reported uh, that they actually are defending the one that is defending over at Ivanrad. So, you know, uh, parallel universe uh, over in this region. But up to you, def believe what you want. And uh, over at the Bakhmut region, the fighting is now in the southeastern side of Bakhmut. Uh, they are currently fighting around this region uh, where the russian forces is actually in the offensive in this region uh, after the ukrainian uh, counter offensive so ukrainians counter attack and then uh didn't work out so now the russians are attacking on the 20th and on the 21st both is reported by the pro-russian source riba the ukrainian forces has taken uh, the sh the champagne uh, factory so according to uh pro-russian source riba the armed forces of ukraine uh that this uh, group called Soleda has equipped the fortified uh equipped a fortified area at the champagne wine factory so it should be so i put this uh, factory to blue color uh, so to indicate uh, the change in the front line and uh over here at the Soleda re Soleda region uh the the russians are attacking uh, fighting at Bakhmutsky on the 20th and uh, there is fighting at Soleda reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry on the 21st so that's all from the Bakhmut front over at the Sivers front the Sivers front the Russians are launching uh, a major push towards uh, Sivers direction towards the western direction that is fighting reported at Sperny according to Boris Rosin a pro-Russian source and then there was fighting reported at Zolo Tarifka and uh, Bilohorivka, these are reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Don't, don't, don't go and comment and say, you only take Rush, pro Russian source. Stop coping. Anyway, uh, so the, the, there is a 20th and the 21st, uh, both, both days, the Russians are pushing and try to retake this, uh, Luhansk, uh, so I should, should I rename should, should, uh, Lugans, you know, if you are pro Russian, uh, the uh, Lugans settlement. So that's all from the Sivers front. Uh, not a lot of hap not a lot happening here because uh, the excitement is elsewhere. Over at the Liman front, at the Liman front, uh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry uh, very weirdly put there is fighting at Liman, and uh, this comes this on the twenty first. However, on another report on the twenty first, but the pro Russian source. Raiba actually reported that the Ukrainians are actually trying to cross the Z Zerubets River to attack uh, Toske or Toskoye uh, in, in Russian. So if, if, you, if you zoom in, you can see the Zerubets River is here. So we can assume that maybe this part is Russian control. Maybe. And then the Ukrainians are trying to cross the river to attack and then the Russians are holding the line. And somehow the Ukrainian Defense Ministry said, oh, fighting is at Liman. And then uh, I have no freaking idea how, how this works. So, you know, very weird kind of a uh, uh, reverse parallel universe where the Ukrainians and the Russians are, you know, over-reporting their opponents. So uh, I'm going to leave this as is uh, because this I will not change the front line based on this report because it doesn't make sense. Uh, similarly, you know, this one, I'm still not sure who where, where who is controlling which exact region here because based on our previous information uh, from Boris Rosin another pro-Russian source they say that uh, Toske is under Ukrainian control so it's a 
very weird situation because after the river, after the Zerubets river, there is no more Toske here. The after the river, this is actually Zarishne. It's not Toske. Toske is actually on the eastern side of this river. So you cannot say Toske is under Ukrainian control and yet uh, the Ukrainians are still trying to cross the river into Toske. That actually makes no sense. So uh, very vague. So we should we will wait and wait and see for more information. The Ukrainians launched a major offensive over here in the Terni region. There is a attempt to cross the river at Yapolivka. And then there is fighting report at Terni. And then there, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, there was fighting in the direction of uh, Shverno Popivka. Shverno Popivka is over here. So there was this major report uh, coming out uh, over here. They talking about you know in the north of the Terni region, the Ukrainians are launching a massive attack uh, with the support of the tank company, and they are trying to reach this Crimea or Crimea Svatovy Highway. This yellow line, this highway. So the Ukrainians are trying to reach the highway. But they were hit by artillery and then they they were trying to you know launch a breakthrough and uh this is then corroborated by the russian defense ministry where the ukrainian forces is launching an offensive in the direction of shevono popivka and uh with two reinforced uh companies so of course uh, as usual the russian defense ministry will say that uh they, they, the ukrainians are uh, have a lot of losses so which i don't care and uh there is fighting a reporter at makivka uh on the 20th they're trying to cross the river same thing over at uh, novo novo vodian uh so on the novo vodian on the 21st this is part of the offensive towards uh uh where, where, where let me see they're trying to cross the river uh same this is part of the same report as the one fighting at toske and uh and then on the 21st again they continue to fight you no know, at Novo Vodian looks you know looks like this is a very uh, popular spot everybody want to have a piece of it and uh so if the Ukrainians are launching the offensive uh, in this area here and uh the Ukrainians also continue to fight at Nadia they're trying to cross the river as well and uh, there is also you no know, fighting at uh set smell still uh, I spell wrongly no wonder I don't know how to pronounce this Stelmakivka so Stamakivka, no, they are also similarly, no, the Ukrainians are still struggling to cross this very tiny river of the Zerubets River. So maybe on the satellite image, the river looks very small, but uh, maybe in actual fact, the river is actually much bigger. So I'm not so sure. I have, I actually checked the satellite image. I actually still cannot see the river. So um, it's very kind of weird that this small little tiny river is so hard to cross. And uh, there is a report. So now we are in the Kopian's front. Or you can call this Sviatovay front. I actually, you know, kind of confuse myself in terms of the front line. Uh, I will, I will, re I will review and rethink how to call this front line. But tentatively, this is the Kopians front. The Ukrainian forces attack uh, Kuzemivka, uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. So, uh, as usual, of course, they say they repel the attack. And um, otherwise, the entire front line uh, over at Kopians region, uh, there is no reports. And uh, so for this region here, the forces that are fighting around here on the Russian side are the Russian regular forces, the mobilized troops. So because whenever there is the Russian regular forces is fighting, uh, intel is very scarce. And uh, we don't really know what's happening un unless the Russian Defense Ministry reports it. And uh, previously, we have this offensive by the U Russian side over here at the Voroshina region. Uh, but we have no more information about it because the Russians did not report about it. So when the Russian Defense Ministry don't report about it, even the pro-Russian sources actually have no information. And uh, as you can see, there's zero information, not even from the Ukrainian side. But because the Ukrainian side, other than the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, none of the pro-Ukrainian sources actually give information because either they don't have the information or they have this self-righteousness uh, about oh i'm pr i'm protecting operational secu uh, security you know so we cannot say anything like as if you will know more than the the russian military so anyway uh so so you can as you can see most of the information uh you know there's a good mix of the pro-russian sources russian defense ministry and the ukrainian defense ministry uh if you have uh, ukrainian sources you think that uh, i can re reference to you no know, do share uh but i doubt i doubt there is any uh, anyway it's against their law to actually share uh, military information and over the khaki front the is fighting reported at tonova and uh this is according to the ukrainian defense ministry uh but no 
as per the previous attacks over you know or the border region of Kharkiv I don't think there will be anything uh to you know develop from and uh on and over on the strategic side uh that the Ukrainian uh f side is very paranoid now uh they are expecting a major offensive you know on the northern front especially over the Sumy Shenehiv region and they believe the Russians will actually penetrate through Belarus uh, down towards Kiev again uh, but the pro-Russian sources are saying that uh, the Russian forces is likely to push uh, south of Pinsk and actually you no know, head towards Lutz Kiev, uh, Lutz Lviv, and uh, to cut off this uh, reinforcement route uh, on the border region with Poland and Slovakia. And I feel that both have a uh, equal possibility based on uh, different objectives and. Uh, so if you go for Kiev, it's trying to force a negotiation. If you push for Lutz and Kiev, oh sorry, Leaf, and then the objective will actually be to cut off reinforcement to end uh, the resupply towards the Ukrainian side. Uh, both is very good uh, uh, by its own merits. Uh, if so, depending on what the Russians think. Uh, the Ukrainian leadership will be like if they think that the Ukrainian leadership is will never surrender then the I think closing the border region uh, might be the way to go and uh, and then you know dr uh, starving out the the Ukrainian military of ammunition and a fuel looks like the fastest way to end the war and uh, on the on the other side on Belarus Belarus is uh, also super paranoid now because they say that uh, there is a uh, there is a force uh, there is training of uh rebel forces and uh saboteurs as well as uh elements that trying to overthrow the government in belarus in lithuania and poland and the uh, lithuanian forces at the border region stupidly pasted uh red uh red stickers on their you no know, helmets and guns probably probably trying to confuse everyone uh at the border region so i Think they're kind of silly you no know, to do something like this they are re they do they, i i feel that you no know, they are really not trying their luck uh very very bad idea very very bad uh, foreign policy so anyway this is the summary for the day of 239 240 for the 20th and 21st of october and uh, for those that has not subscribed you know this is the time for you to press the subscribe button uh if you have already subscribed also please check if your subscribe button is still subscribed and uh please please press the like button to support this work and uh and uh do check out the all the links in the description below you know there's a lot of things uh in this dpa community that you can actually be part of and i'll see you in the next update emotional damage